y'all ready for this? Howdy folks, Roach here. Uh, this is the latest installment of uh, in the Recon series, uh, and this one is called Rule of Lie. Sort of a play on the whole rule of law thing, so I just want to make sure you know what it is. First, I'd like to thank all of you folks that, that are out there supporting me. Uh, it it does make a difference, and uh, Ileana and I, we truly appreciate it. Uh, it it's not easy uh, doing what it is that we're doing, uh, but we uh, we definitely uh, appreciate what you uh, what you can do. If you like to contribute in, you know, a uh, you know colorable law, uh, colorable money way, uh, if you just simply visit my website. Um, Roge.com, then you can, uh, uh, there's a little donation button on there, and you might poke around on the site just to see what's there. I'm very busy. I've got a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire, uh, most especially you folks here in Texas. Um, there are things that, uh, that are in your best interest. Um, I do uh, want to restore uh, the right to due process of law here in this country and uh, lawful courts back in this country. I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you, you know, know what I'm talking about, that you'll definitely see the benefit of doing that. Uh, okay, so this video here is a play on words, rule of law. They throw that around a lot. Uh, generally, it's people who are pious and and uh, of, uh, of you know of a certain caliber, and they use that as a means of you know uh, bringing you to heel. Okay, meaning that they are uh, sub you're being subjected under their jurisdiction and their authority, and you better be happy about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is. In my experience, uh, in the 20 years that I've been uh, uh, learning real law, and I don't mean colorable law, and I don't mean procedure, I don't deal in fiction, I deal in law, um, I've encountered many high-level law enforcement officers and judges and attorneys, okay? And often, when I, uh, when the subject of where they derive their lawful authority comes up and I take away everything else from them because it's a fallacy. I mean, most people, you know, they're going to throw one thing out. If you can bat that away, then they'll throw something else out and you can bat that away. But when you get and you bat it away, all of their volleys and all of the rocks they throw at you, uh, it really comes down to this. They use a biblical scripture to, uh, as the foundation of where they derive their, their authority, okay? And that scripture is Romans 13, okay? I've had veterans of police uh, with 25 years uh, tell me that Romans 13 is the scripture that, that tells, you know, that gives them the authority to tell you what to do. And if you don't do that, then, of course, then, then you're evil and criminal, and I can beat you because you're a criminal. Okay? And this is what they're using. Okay? Now, pastors and churches, I, I went to the, I don't mean to single them out, but I'm going to use their name. Okay? I went in that place, and they told me um, that, uh, that uh, um, in essence, that same thing, that Romans 13 is, is what requires me to obey, you know, what the federal government of the United States or the state government or the law enforcement officer says. Um, and, you know, I ask him a simple question. Um, do you really think that God wants me to break the law? That was the question. Well, you know, of course, you get a vapor lock on that. Okay. So pastors are teaching this. Okay. Now, the problem is, is we, the people, aren't going and verifying this stuff for ourselves. So we're taking what they're telling us on face value. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Now, does not matter whether or not you believe Scripture to have anything to do with law? Okay. doesn't. Why? Because a lot of people out there do. Most especially those people in government. So whether or not you believe it really doesn't matter, this is what they're using against you. So you might as well just bite the bullet and try to figure out exactly what it is that they're talking about. 
okay? Now, and, and it doesn't matter whether they do it. There's a majority of people in this country that, uh, that take, uh, that take the, the, the Bible as substantive law. Okay? And as the foundation of, uh, of the republic government of these United States. Okay? For good reason. Okay? All right, so, I, I mean, uh, we have to understand the power nexus here. If we don't understand the power nexus, uh, then, then it's our fault. And we deserve to be beaten for that. And we will. And are. Okay? So, this is very important. Right? Not just for you to understand. But most especially for those people in government and those people in law enforcement. Because you're doing something that may not be in strict accordance with the law. Now, this is going to be a powerful video. It's going to hurt some people's feelings. You're not going to like the information that you get. I'm sorry, I didn't, I ain't, I'm not doing it. I'm just simply showing you something. And anybody out there that's got two neurons that are actually cooperating should be able to follow what I'm talking about. It'll, it is obvious. I'm going to present actual evidence. Okay, you can go through and, you know, hey, you, you can talk amongst yourself. If you need help understanding it, hey, look, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, okay, find me. Okay, I'm not a secret. I'm right out in front of everybody. Uh, they, of course, people aren't beating a path to my door, but I'm right out there. You can talk to me. I will engage you. Uh, and, and, and since I'm sort of out, you know, out in the middle of, uh, you know, left field apparently, uh, you know, I don't, I don't get a whole lot of people, so I'm perfectly capable of responding right now to all the messages that come in. Um, if if we're lucky, then I'm going to have more messages than I can respond to. That's the objective here, because when we get to that point, then we have a real chance of actually restoring lawful government and, uh, and actually putting back the republic as the founding fathers actually envisioned it. Okay, and you folks that want to help, uh, the last thing I need is your firearms. Okay, we don't need to actually uh, resort to uh, any type of violence. Uh, we still have reasonable recourse uh, available to us. Uh, however, that is contingent on you having sufficient knowledge to utilize that recourse. And unfortunately, here in the United States, <laughs> most people don't have that. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into the presentation room here. Okay, all right. So let's let me uh, bag all this here. Don't mean to. Oop. All right, all right. So okay. Well, let's just let's just start in here right here. Okay, this is from the New International Version uh, of the Bible. Okay. This one was actually cited to me as the substantive foundation that requires me to do what a police officer says. Who told me that? A, 27, a former 27-year veteran of a uh, municipal police department uh, in, in the St. Louis area. Okay. Now, this woman, she called me insane. She called me a hypocrite. And she called me uh, a, a criminal. Okay. Uh, and she cited this, this version as, as the reason why I was wrong. And that I was cherry picking scripture. Uh, and, and it was because I was wrong. And, and, and odd thing enough is they tossed her out of law enforcement for actually not doing what this says. Okay. Uh, and what it was is there was a crack house in the neighborhood. She wanted to close it down. She uh, tried to uh, prosecute that and, and set up a bust for it to get it shut down. Unfortunately, apparently there were people in the local city government that were deriving a benefit from the operation of this, uh, this crack house. So they told her to back off. And she didn't. Now, if she was not the hypocrite that she is, and not lazy, then she would have just sucked it up and done what they told her. But she didn't. She resisted, and they got rid of her. Right? So then, she tells me that I'm supposed to do this when she herself didn't even do it. Now, I'm not going to tell you her name, but 
She knows who she is, and if she ever finds this video, this is me mopping the floor with you. Okay? So, it's a service that I provide, most especially to anybody who's in law enforcement. I want you guys to make it. I want you to, I want you to do your jobs properly so that all of our rights are protected, most especially yours. Because the way you guys are doing this right now, it, you're putting yourself in considerable danger. Okay? Not good. Nobody wants that. We want you protected. We want you uh, peace officers. We want you to know the law. Right? If you don't know the law, you can look up a court case called Screws et al. v. the United States. And you can read all about it. Um, I'm not putting that link in there. Find it yourself. Okay? Now, for the rest of you folks, let's get into, uh, let's get into this. Because I want to contrast this with something else, but I want to read this first so that you understand. Okay, first thing says Romans 13, New International Version, NIV, submission to government authorities. Hey, this is great. They were actually kind enough to put a title that covers the particular material in this scripture. Wow, don't you love the convenience of modern life? Okay, it says let everyone be subject to governing authorities okay now i highlighted governing authorities on purpose it's bold on purpose remember the reference to government governing authorities it's important so let everyone be subject to governing authorities for there is no authority that which god uh, uh, no authority except that which god has established okay all right take that second part after the comma the other start we're gonna we're gonna hold off on and we'll return to that but that second part i'm totally down with that totally down yep i believe there's no authority uh except that which god has established yep no problem with that at all right the authorities that exist have been established by god okay yes why because he runs the place he's the ultimate referee he this is his universe uh, we are just watching the show okay it says consequently whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what god has instituted and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves hmm. well seems reasonable you know if you go against god then you're going to bring judgment against yourself okay i'm i'm okay with that all right, and for those who do so, we'll bring. Uh, okay, and for those. Okay, sorry. Three, rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Mm. Rulers. Hey, wait a minute. Rulers. Why didn't they use government authorities? They use government authorities at the top, but they, but they used rulers down here. Hmm. Okay. All right. Make. No problem. Let's continue reading. Maybe, maybe it, it talks about it a little bit more and explains it. Explains it. You know, who, who knows? All right. It says, "Do you want to be free from fear of one in authority?" Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, you, me, everybody else wants to be, you know, free of that fear of of one in authority. Okay. So now we got one. Okay. We had rulers. Now we have one, and at the top we have governing authorities. Okay. One. One what? Okay. It says, then do it says, then do what is then do what is right, and you will be commended. Okay, I want to do what's right, just like everybody else, right? You, me, you know, why would I go out there and commit crimes? It seems like a hard life. I'm nah, I'm, I'm totally not down with that. Mm -mm. It says, For one in authority is God's servant. Oh, okay. One. I'm guessing that it's a man. Okay, one man in authority is God's servant. Okay, all right. Uh, for one in authority is God's servant for your good. Okay, I'm cool with that. You know, he's a good guy. You know, he's doing good. I'm totally there. He says, but if you do wrong, be afraid. Okay. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. Ooh, there's that word rulers again. They didn't use governing authorities, and they didn't use one, whatever that is. They use rulers. Hmm. Rulers are men. Hmm. Okay. 
They are God's servants of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Mm. Men punishing men for wrongdoing. Okay. I like it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. like that. You do wrong, you get punished. That's great. Okay. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities. Okay. Wait a minute. Didn't they just say rulers? And we got government authorities. We have one. Now it's back to authorities. Hmm. Okay. Now how many people do I have to submit to? Okay. Well, maybe they'll explain it. We'll go on. Uh, therefore, it's necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but as a matter of conscience. Oh, okay. So, all right. N not because they're going to beat you, but because it's the right thing to do. Why? Be because this says it's the right thing to do. Yeah. You know? Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. Then it comes down to your six. It says... This is all you want. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants. Hmm. The authorities are God's servants. Okay. All right. Who give their full time to governing? Really? I don't know. I think half the time these guys are out golfing somewhere, right? Okay, full time. All right. I believe it. I guess golfing is just part of that whole governing thing. I just, you know, wait. You know, what do I know? Okay. Give to everyone you owe them. Uh, what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. Okay. If revenue, then revenue. Revenue. Did they have that in Rome? Revenue? I'm pretty sure they didn't even invent that word until recently. No, Romans didn't have revenue. This is a new thing, right? Because I'm pretty sure nah, there was no such thing as revenue back in Rome. So how in the world could that actually accurately represent um, you know, what, what was actually written in Scripture at the time? I don't... That's a little question... Because they didn't have revenue back then. They didn't even deal in that. Revenue is, revenue is uh, you know, based on a colorable money system. Right? Colorable money. Revenue. Right? Well, you know, I got a, hey, I got a Barron's Law Dictionary here. Let's, uh, let's actually look it up. Okay. All right. So, all right. Revenue. Income from whatever source derived, that which returns or comes back from an investment. I don't think the stock market was going on back then. But, you know, hey, they say revenue. Oh, you know, this is what the cops want us to do because, you know, this is what this says. All right, now let's return back to governing authorities because it's pretty important. All right. All right, so this is the new international version. Uh, quite frankly, I think it's garbage. And you should throw it out, or burn it, or use it for something useful, like propping up a wobbly table or something. Okay? Because it has no business of any kind of meaningful citations. The words might be pretty, that's fine, but you're better off watching a movie, or reading a romance novel. You know, probably a steamy one at that. Uh, this, this is garbage. And you just toss it out. And I'll show you why, I'll show you why. You know, I don't mean to make, you know, unsubstantiated, uh, you, you, you know, calls for, you know, you know radical, uh, radical behavior without, you know, substantively backing it up. So here we go. This is Romans 13 from the authorized King James Version. Let's read what it says. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Okay. My soul, right, will be subject unto higher powers. My soul. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see what they said. Let's go back and see what they said over here. Let everyone be subject. Hmm. Wait a minute. 
but it doesn't say that. Now, do they mean everyone when they said soul? Yeah, they could probably have been using that as a, 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 a structure because, you know, at that point, they, they, they figured every man has a soul. So if you refer to the soul, then you refer to the man. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, but let's talk about this higher powers thing because that's actually way different from governing authorities. Okay? It says higher powers. Higher powers. That's important because we're going to go into that. It says higher powers. Not lower powers. Higher powers. Okay? For there is no power but of God. Okay, yeah. Uh, the powers that be are ordained, ordained of God. Okay, let's go back to that and see what it says. It says the authorities that exist have been established by God. Mm, authorities. Okay, and then powers. You know, power, authority, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. He says, whoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that shall, uh, they that resist shall receive unto them themselves damnation. Well, I'll be damned. Okay. Really, I don't have a problem with that so far. That I don't, yeah, okay. Right? So I've got higher authorities, right, that are put in place by God. Okay. And how do I recognize those higher authorities? Well, they actually actually describes that. He says, For rulers are not a terror to good works. Okay, so let's look at rulers finally. Rulers. Rulers are men. Men are accountable to God. Caesar was accountable to God. If you don't believe me, ask Brutus. Brutus was the one that stuck a knife in his back. At that point, woo, there was judgment and he was accountable. So rulers are accountable to God. Governments are not. I will explain why later. Okay? So rulers are. And I'm, I'm down with that. And they make reference in the prior passage to rulers also. Those are men. Those aren't colorable corporations or entities. Right? Here's a question. Have you ever shaken the hand of Mr. or Mrs. U.S. federal government? I haven't. I haven't shaken the hand of state of Texas either. They tell me that that's why I'm supposed to do things because the state of Texas tells me to, but you know what? I've never met these people. So therefore, the state of, state of Texas is not accountable to God and neither is the federal government of the United States. And apparently the officers that actually work within that that those structures, they aren't accountable to God either. Or they wouldn't be doing half of the things that they've been doing. Probably 90% of them. Okay? For rulers are not terrors to good works. Those are men who are not terrors to good works. Why? Because if they do, somebody will beat the shit out of them. How do you, how do you, how do you whip the federal government? You can't even put it in your hand, or the state of Texas, for that matter. You can't even hold it in your hand. How are you going to beat it? How are you going to hold that thing, that entity, right, that invisible apparition, accountable? You can't. It's not accountable. So therefore, it's obvious that it's this this scripture is not talking about these fictional entities. Why? Because we're talking about someone that can be held accountable. Not some ethereal concept that cannot, does not apply. Okay? All right. So, uh, rulers are not a terror to good works. Okay? Uh, but looks to me, and I don't know, I might be off base here, but I don't think the government is doing a lot of good works. Right? They're doing these things that I would consider bad. Just me. Okay? All right. For he, oh, okay, uh, and it says, uh, for rulers are not to, uh, to good works, but to the evil. Okay, so, yeah, good and evil. Yeah, that, that's what you'd want out of a ruler. Uh, otherwise, you have a tyrant, and you usually put their heads on a pole. That's usually what happens to them, or they get hung or eaten by dogs or something. Okay, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. 
For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God. Okay, so what are they talking about? Is this a specific reference to the government official doing good, or is that just a reference to you doing good? Right? So let's look at it real close. It says, for he, and again, that's a man. He is a man. Okay, you can't say he, federal government, or he, state of Texas. He, a man, is a minister of God to thee for good. Okay, that means he, he he's, he's a good guy. He's ministering to you. Okay. But if thou, that means you, do that which is evil, be afraid. Okay. Right? Okay. For he beareth not the sword in vain. He, meaning the other guy. For he beareth the sword not in vain, for he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay. Okay. Totally cool. Right? Doesn't say anything about me disobeying what that guy says. It just simply says, hey, if I'm doing evil. Okay? And I, you know, if I'm doing evil, then so be it. Whip it to me. Okay? You've got to have a victim around here somewhere. That means I've hurt somebody or, or deprived somebody of some rights or property or whatever. Right? And he is going to make it right. Okay? Doesn't say I'm, doesn't say anything about disobeying him. Just says, well, if I'm doing evil. You know, and if you want to say that me disobeying, you know, governing authorities is evil, well, we're going to get into that. Okay? All right. So, it says, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Okay, so they are God's ministers. Okay, they're good guys, and they're doing good, and they're doing it all the time. Hmm? Does it? Okay. <laughs> all right. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due. Okay. Right. So who who is, therefore, due tribute? Well, you know, I don't know. Custom to whom custom, right? Fear to uh, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And then it says, "Owe no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law." Hmm. So it says, "Owe no man anything." Wow. Doesn't that just completely destroy our entire global financial system that it's purely based on a debt-based colorable money system requiring the obligation to pay through people owing a debt? And it says right here, owe no man anything. See why the financial uh, system is having a problem now? They're going against the law. All right, what's going to happen to them? Hmm? What's going to happen? Now, uh, it says tribute. Okay, tribute is different from taxes. That means tribute is due the king who is actually protecting you with his army. And these his soldiers are putting their life down to protect his lands and protect you. Uh, and, you know, really what we're talking about with respect to tribute, with respect to Roman taxes, I mean, it was a pittance. I think they were paying like 4% of income or uh, of, of their, their, you know, share of uh, grains, you know, income. Not income, okay? Income something else. If you don't know what income is, <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, they would have to give maybe 4% of, of their crop or, you know, some sort of monetary uh, uh, contribution in taxes. Uh, 4%, folks. 4%, that's nothing. That's even less than your sales tax when you go and buy stuff. Right? Oh, and it was a big deal, too. Oh, they complained about it. Oh, my gosh. And, and us, we're getting raped here. I mean, totally raped. Totally raped. Right? I mean, th th this is, you know, uh, this is apples and oranges here. Okay? But it does say here, oh, no man anything. Okay? So interest is against the law. All right? That's why usury is against the law. Right? It's right here. Right here. 
All right, so, okay, if usury is against the law, why does the Catholic Church condone it? And why is it going on? Hmm? Answer that question. If you're going to use Romans 13, okay, and I get to choose which version, and, and, and don't get me wrong, folks, okay, I, whether or not this is this is uh, you know something that one could legitimately justify uh, 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 you know uh, you know the derivation of uh, of uh, uh, you know lawful power or not really doesn't matter. But look at don't do you see the complete inconsistency between this authorized King James version, which was a round at the time of King James, and this new NIV magical version that just showed up here recently. Looks pretty self-serving, doesn't it? How convenient for them. Hmm, oddly enough, well, apparently we just needed a new Bible for the new, uh, the new quote government authorities, uh, governing authorities that we got now. Yeah, mm, okay. All right, so, so let's take a look here. Uh, let's see if I can get this up. Okay, I'm blowing it. Okay, all right, this is from Revelations 22, the King James Version. And I don't know if you've never seen this. This is pretty interesting. Okay, it, this is uh, from Revelation, uh, Revelation 22, uh, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. What does that mean? That means everything that we read in the NIV that wasn't actually part of the King James Version means that somebody did some editing and some changing. One of the particular entities that that passage uh, referred to and simply adding on at the end all of this stuff about taxes and revenue. Okay? And for you, those of you folks that say, oh, well, they, you know, that doesn't happen. I'm going to ask you a question, folks. All right. Uh, do people that rip the heads off of babies, do you think that they have any moral reservation? Right? Any moral reservation? Is there anything prohibiting them? Morally? A conscience, maybe? from distorting the meaning of the uh, scripture. I have to say, I mean, you know, quite frankly, I, I don't see it. I don't think, you know, a lying, murdering, scumbag criminal, um, I don't think that that would keep, I don't think he, ha there, there's anything that would keep him from not modifying, uh, you know, uh, the meaning and the intent, both letter and, and spirit of, uh, of scripture, right? All right, so what happened? Some criminal came in here and said, all of a sudden got all creative with everything. Obviously, wasn't he very, very, uh, uh, very clever about it, not knowing that revenue, there was no such thing. Not only that, but it makes reference to tra uh, taxes, and we're talking about tribute here. It's a different thing here. The, using the NIV version of the Bible, okay, uh, as as justification for knocking your head in because you don't do what these guys tell you, all right, is an error. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue and let me jump in a little bit because we're not going to ex explore the whole concept of governing authorities. Let's see if I can get it to come up here. Okay, this is the power structure, okay, that the founding fathers were operating off of in order to create our republic in the first place, okay? It comes from the concept of the created 
is not more powerful than the Creator. Said another way, I brought you into this world, I'll take you out. Okay? Your creation is not more powerful than you. That's the law. Don't like it? Sorry, I didn't invent the universe. You take it up with the guy who did. Okay? So, under that model, power flows this way, down. God creates man. Man is not more powerful than God. Man creates constitutions. Constitutions are not more powerful than man. Constitutions create governments. Governments aren't aren't pow more powerful than constitutions. Why? Because look at the Supreme Court. Look what it does. It's supposed to be going out there and making sure the government is is uh, uh, working in strict accord with the Constitution. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Whether or not they're actually doing it is a question. There's a complexity here and a nuance, however, and I'm not going to go into that here. Uh, but for most people, they look at the Supreme Court and they say, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's things going on here that are totally unconstitutional. Where are you guys? Right? Right? So constitutions create governments. Governments are no not power, more powerful than constitutions. And then governments create corporations. Corporations are not more powerful than governments. Corporations are not more powerful than constitutions. Corporations are not more powerful than man. And corporations are not more powerful than God. Therefore, also, governments are not more powerful than constitutions. Governments are therefore not more powerful than man. Indiv an individual sovereign man has more power than the state government and the federal government. Right? Because the, uh, the Constitution created the states, right? Um, well, the states were there first, and then, then they created the Constitution uh, you know, as, as a union of these individual sovereign states. That was the original model. So the states themselves were uh, derived their sovereignty from the people, and the rights of the people were protected under, uh, under their state citizenship, not from the republic being uh, you know, a citizen of the republic because it didn't exist. There, there was no such thing as the, the, a citizen of the republic. There was citizens of the state of Tennessee or citizens of the state of Texas or citizens of you know, the, the state of Maryland. But nobody said, well, I'm a citizen of the U.S. Nobody said that. Okay? So, some change. Alright? So, how did this power pyramid get turned upside down? How did how did you ended up at the bottom? Hmm. Because it was a trick, folks. Let's go and see if we can figure that trick out. All right. See if I can get my thing to work here. All right. So let's see if we can get them all down here. Ah, here we go. All right. So what the government did, okay, because it had the power to create corporations. It created some corporations. These were fictional corporations under its exclusive authority because it had that power. Why? Because we gave it to them. As, as men and women, we gave them that power to create these corporations. So they created one called state, all capital letters. Now, understand, right? These weren't union states, folks. These were federal states, right? Because we were no longer a union. We are a federation. Now, in a union... The states are individual sovereign countries, right? Those sovereign countries and the people within them have power, more power than the national government, okay? So a federal state in a federation, the central government has power over its subordinate states, okay? So what they did was, we're not talking about union states. They created a corporation called the state. Here where I'm at, it's called the State of Texas. All capital letters. Indicating that it is a corporation created under the exclusive authority of the federal government of the United States. Then, under that, they created person. It's another corporation. Under the authority of the several federal state. Right? Bottom bottom of the pyramid, folks. Worthless slave. Slave to a corporate fiction under the authority of the government. 
be great if the government was actually accountable. Okay? So, how did the trick work? Well, they can't make you a person. You have to jump into that office on your own, willingly. So, how'd they do that? Well, when they created it, one, they called it person, right? So, if you say, hey, I'm a person, guess what? <laughs> You're that corporation. Right? Okay. But they're not forcing you. Okay? So they created this office. You place yourself in office. The law or the statutes apply to the office. They don't apply to the man. But if you're in that office, well, the law applies to you. And if you don't know the difference, the law applies to you. Why? Because you're incompetent. You don't know that there's a difference between person that we talk about and person of the corporation. That corporation has a name. Okay? That person corporation has a name. That person corporation was created under the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. Right? All right? That's all post-1861, all Reconstruction illegal theory. Okay? It's based on a theory of legal positivism. I've said this many times. If you look it up, even in Wikipedia, you'll see exactly what the problem is, folks. Okay? Under this system... The person's God is the government. Not God. The person is a corporation. Okay? So that's how they did. Now, what is the name of that person corporation? What is it? It has a name. You know what it is? U.S. Citizen. That's the name of the corporation. And every time you put that little checkbox, every time when somebody says, are you a U.S. citizen? You say, yeah. Guess what? You voluntarily placed yourself in office and all of that corporate fiction that legislatures, le legislators have been then putting out for, for decades and decades that, you know, right now they don't even read anymore. You're all subject to all of that. And good luck. It takes 700 year, lifetimes to actually read that. That's eight hours a day continuously. Good luck with that. That's what you have to do. You're breaking a you're breaking statute right now. Okay, you're breaking it. Why? I'm sure that if these guys aren't reading what it is that they're passing into law, that there's there's some folks in uh, writing you know government policy right now that are complete trolls putting you know who knows what in it because these guys never actually go through it. They just simply you know it's just like what was it? Nancy Pelosi said, oh well we, we don't know what's in we don't know what's in the bill until we actually pass it. You know how can we know what's in the bill without you know first passing it? Right. Okay. So these people are, you know, and what is look? Hey, all is fair in fiction. We're not talking about a realm in real law. We're talking about colorable law that applies to a person. Okay. Now, law enforcement. Let's look at law enforcement. Well, the law, the uh, the law doesn't compel performance. Right. What does that mean? <laughs> that means there's nothing stopping you from obeying. Uh, there's nothing making you obey the law. If there's force, it means there's a contract. Now, under a contract, you can be forced to the terms of a contract. So if you see force, there's a contract. What's a contract? Well, I'm a U.S. citizen. If you look at your, uh, if you look at your passport, and I don't know um, lately if they're still doing it, it says this passport is for U.S. citizens and U.S. nationals. Hmm, U.S. nationals. What is that? Well, you guys don't know. Not the same as a U.S. citizen. Hmm. Right? But, you know, hey, you know, look. You know, you can't get a job without saying, hey, I'm a U.S. citizen. Hey, I'm your slave. Right? And so what is law enforcement doing? They're enforcing the contract. They're enforcing the deal. You voluntarily placed yourself into that corporation. They are helping you meet the terms of your obligations. And they will beat you until you do. Do police officers know that? Oh, some of them do. Do attorneys? Yeah, most of them do. Do judges? Absolutely. They know the trick they're playing on you. Problem is, you don't. And there, unfortunately for me, I met a police officer, had no clue what, I, what it is I was talking about. That's a dangerous situation. This is somebody that's uh, committing crimes, has no idea they're even doing it. 
In fact, that's technically slavery, right? That's uh, it's technically slavery. It's, it is capitalizing on the ignorance of other people and enslaving them due to their ignorance. Is that wrong? No, no. If you're ignorant of the law, you're delivered into the hands of evil men. So, hey, they're doing God's work. However, if you're not ignorant of the law, they do what you tell them to do. Why? Because the governments derive their just power by the consent of the governed, meaning that their power flows from the men and women of we the people, Right? They do not have power unto themselves. So it better be what they're doing better be okay with you, or what they're doing is a crime. Right? Now, if you folks in law enforcement don't understand what I'm talking about, the onus is on you. You can read Screws et al. v. the United States, and you can figure out what it is that I'm talking about. Okay? Alright? Hey, like that? Man, island. Man, island. All right, so now you know the difference. So now you know that no man is an island. Hmm? All right, so getting back to this. Uh, the use of colorable law. Okay, and I mean statute. I mean everything that was written after 1861 is public policy, not public law. Whether or not uh, uh, Supreme Court judges know this, I've gone before judges themselves, and they've confirmed this for me. Uh, I, I'm going to. Uh, 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 I've been in star chambers. Okay, I know this. Okay, I know this. Uh, and you know, here's the thing. Uh, in 2006, I stopped doing what they want me to do. Notice that I'm still here, doing a video. Uh, 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 am I not obligated to fulfill that? I mean, I ain't any less a patriot than any one of you folks that call themselves a U.S. citizen. In fact, I'm probably more of a patriot. Okay, why? Because I'm in strict, I try, try to be in strict accord with the law. And I don't do fiction. Okay, I don't do fiction. Why? Because if I do fiction, that's a fraud and it's against the law. I can't do it. It's a lie. Right? So, I can't do it. I mean, it just, it's just not my deal. It's a, it's a function of the Holy Grail law. If you know what that is, there's a link in the, in, in the description. Right? So, police officers are out there thinking that they're doing the right thing and they're using... Romans 13 as the their primary citation for the authority that gives them the power to beat your head in if you don't do what they tell you to do. Or if you're doing something that the government says is wrong. Right? So the problem is not, okay, is not, uh, 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 is not the law enforcement. Okay? The problem is us. It is us that do not understand the law. Now, one of the things that I found out was kind of kind of interesting the other day, just just what two days ago maybe, is that there was an article posted on Q, and I can't uh, I can't cite the actual number of it, but it basically talks about some of the things that uh, the new Attorney General Barr is actually uh, going to uh, uh, prosecute uh, people for, specifically people uh, who are engaging in continual abuse of office. And I thought it was pretty interesting uh, what what was in there, okay? Because it's something that I've been saying since 2012, at least. And that is, right, he's going to prosecute uh, those people who, who, uh, who are depriving people of rights under color of law. What does that mean? That means the government has been using fictional statutes and code to deprive you and I of our real law, uh, real lawful rights. Now, what does that mean? The government has not been respecting our right to remedy and recourse to the law. I mean, they can make any monopoly box rules they want, but when we say, hey, look, uh -uh, we're not playing that game, they have to honor our, our wish. If we want to 
cooperate willingly, we can do that. This is what really puts, uh, uh, this is what really uh, uh, just undermines <coughs> our judicial system because people who do truly know the law know that uh, a procedural court, an administrative court, doesn't have sufficient authority to e e e even prosecute a, a criminal in real law. Because all the criminal has to do is say, hey, I have remedy and recourse to the law, and for you to prosecute me under your system is itself against the law. This is something that is being reconciled right now. It's going to be a hard lesson. I would suggest that you folks that are in law enforcement, you, uh, you sheriffs out there, that you get up to speed so that you don't end up on the wrong side of a rope. Because these people are serious. I think we do need peace officers in this country. I certainly don't think we need commercial enterprises that are going through and charging people, and, and which amounts to uh, an unlawful tax. Uh, I, I think if you want to uh, actually benefit the public good, and, and don't get me wrong, you guys and, and, and ladies, okay? Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not anti-cop here, right? If I was anti-cop, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't even be doing this, okay? I want to ensure that you can come home to your kids and to your wives and your husbands. And you will do that if you are in strict accordance with the law. If not, you read the you read the manual. I just read the manual. What happens to you if you don't? Okay? I'm here to help you. I can tell you. Whether or not you do it, that's something else. Now, you guys have been being slaughtered out there. You should figure out why. Governing authorities are not rulers. Governing authorities are not uh, are not higher powers. Governing authorities are lower powers. Sovereign men and women, and I didn't say sovereign citizen, and I didn't say that on purpose. I said sovereign. Okay? Those folks have rights. Screws et al. versus the United States. Any officer operating under color of law must know the law. He does not have the, he or she does not have the excuse of saying, "Hey, I didn't know." So if you go and you infringe my rights when I have specifically reserved my rights, you have no excuse. And I have you at the law. Things are changing in this country. I think they're going to restore uh, a lawful court system back in this country. And if they do, there's a lot of people with a downside here. You want to get in front of this. Be the hero that everybody thinks you are. Right? I don't question your motive. I know you're out there trying to do a good thing. I know it's a thankless job. I know it's boring. I know you, the hoops that you have to jump to do what it is that you're doing. Largely because of some you know, idiot bureaucrat that decides, oh, well, hey, isn't it, uh, I think it's great to, uh, you know, make uh, strawberry ice cream illegal. And then you're out there going, eh, what? Jump through hoops? And, and, and what it really truly is doing is it's actually stopping you from doing it what you truly need to be doing, and that is protecting the citizenry, protecting the people, the American people, Right? You know, if, if if you're going out there issuing citations for, you know, uh, you know, bad breath or whatever, um, you, you're 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 not you don't have the time to actually go through people that are truly truly injuring people, and there's a lot of that. Now here, let me bring this up too, right? People that come up from Mexico or even South America, okay, into into the United States, quote unquote, illegally. Okay. Uh, under treaty, they're to be recognized as men and women, like the man and woman at the top of the pyramid. Under treaty. They are Mexican nationals. Therefore, they enjoy rights. All the rights that a U.S. citizen gives up to be a U.S. citizen. What ha would happen if all of these folks coming to the United States realized that these people are so desperately to make them U.S. citizens so that they can be enslaved, would they be as excited about being a U.S. citizen 
And would they even want to step foot in this country, knowing full well that these people are bending over backwards trying to make them U.S. citizens? Well, there'd be an invisible wall. They wouldn't set foot in here. There's some things we got to fix here, folks. This is it. Right? Romans 13, as interpreted in, in, in our modern world, does not apply to the entities that, right? To the entities we think it does. Okay? We're talking about people who are accountable. Now, do, do you believe, uh, is, is Adam Schiff somebody that, that you feel comfortable trusting? Or Hillary Clinton, is she somebody you could trust? Huh? Can you trust them? I can't. I mean, Morgan Carroll, uh, a former senator from Colorado, basically told me uh, when I asked her, Are you my public servant, somebody I can trust? And she says, uh, quite honestly, I don't think you can. Uh, then they're not trustees. And if they're not trustees and we can't trust them, then they are not accountable. Nothing good can come from that, folks. Nothing good. And if you look around, it looks like some of them plagues that they talked about in the back of the book. That's actually going on right now. wonder why. Right? Maybe we've got this whole thing upside down. Now, I'm not going to say maybe. This whole thing is upside down. And we need to fix it. Does that mean we run out there and grab our gun and uh, we're going to make things right? What we do is learn the law. It's very simple. Look, what did I do? I just basically took two scriptures here that are the foundation of, 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 of and you know, the justification for why law enforcement goes around here beating people, tasing people, and completely depriving them of their real rights. It should be obvious to you that there's something seriously wrong with that. Because if you go back to the King James and, and hey, Let's just say, hey, wait a minute, maybe that's not truly even a justification. But the inconsistency between the old King James Version and the new King James Version is enough to say, hey, wait a minute, they're not even following the, you know, their own, their own rules. They're making it up as they go. That is not a world that we want to live in. Because I'm certain that Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi, bless her heart, there's a woman that really needs a vacation. Okay, really. Don't die in office, lady. Go out and have fun, right? You have no business, uh, you know, uh, grinding yourself to death, right? Okay? And, and and if you look at some of the people that, that aren't even qualified to hold office, uh, spouting off like, like you know, um, like, you know, goofballs, right? We got incomp completely incompetent, insane people thinking that they've got the ultimate authority, that they're the boss and all this other stuff. That's a supreme misunderstanding of the law. It's sophomoric, it's juvenile, and it's dangerous. And people are going to get hurt. Because it won't be long before these goofballs piss people off enough where they're going to grab guns and ropes and they're going to set things right and folks, there is no need to resort to that. We have reasonable recourse. I would suggest we start We start with that. So far, there isn't sufficient number of people that have a sufficient knowledge of the law for us to even maintain a lawful government. Now, if you like this video, share it. Share it. Talk about it. If you're a law enforcement officer, you should be sharing this video more than anybody else. Why? Because it's your butt that's on the line here. Okay? There's imminent danger coming. If we keep going down this road, you, you guys and gals in law enforcement, you're not going to be able to stop this. You're, you're going to have absolute mayhem here. There's more goofballs in this country than there are you. And no amount of firearms and no amount of weaponry or equipment is going to stop the mass of people that can create massive amounts of damage to everything. So if you want to do good, I suggest you get on this, this bulldozer. 
right? You're free to ride along with me. Don't matter. You're free. But I bet you, you stand in front of it, <laughs> you won't be standing in front of it long. Eventually, the folks are going to figure this stuff out. It's not hard. Look what I did. I just took one book of the Bible, compared it in two different versions, and you, it should be obvious that there's something really wrong here. And if you and law enforcement are using that scripture as a justification for what you're doing to people in the deprivation of rights, and you are not respecting them when they reserve their rights, you come up a, across a, a, a person who knows how to reserve their rights, and you don't respect that right, it's not them who is a criminal. Right? It's you. Don't let it get to a point where we have to hang all of you people. Do not. Figure it out. It's not hard. If you have questions, I'm at your service. I can establish a number of proofs. I know how to restore the lawful republic. I know what's required. It's a little bit of effort. The law I'm talking about that people need to learn, that used to be taught, handed down from child to, uh, from uh, parent to child, is not hard to figure out. It, it comes in this little book here. You know, it's just a little book. You want one of those books? Let me know. I'll, sh I'll show you how to get one. Now, I mean, if you look at past videos, and I think you should, all right? I, I don't try to waste people's time. I try to provide value to people, right? What's my objective? My objective is get to a world where every right of every man and woman on this planet is protected. There's no reason for any other system than that. You can be a communist all you want. You can be have any kind of religion you want. But we better be protecting the rights of every man and woman on this on this planet. Because if we're not, we're gonna we're gonna end up a sterile rock floating uselessly in space. Guaranteed. I happen to know the referee. He's not happy. The lack of happiness. Don't let wait until the lightning starts striking because, uh, I mean, you're just going to have to wait that out because there's going to be a lot of it. And you folks in the church who think that you're going to tell your congregation that God is commanding you to break the law, how dare you, you filthy criminals? Your sheep get a free pass. You do not. How dare you? How dare you? exploit the ignorance. If you don't know any better, then you have no business being where you're at. And your congregation, by every right, should tar and feather you and run you on a rail out of town. Absolutely. Completely disgusting. I was wearing the devil suit. Do you like that? <laughs> that was a, you know, I, to, you know, I practice that every day. You know. <laughs> Look, it's all good here, folks. Let's do something right for a change. Okay? You'll love it. And happiness is really cool. You should have some. You should try it. It's great. I love it. I get a little frustrated, but, you know, once in a while. But, eh, most of the time I'm happy. So share, share, share. Retweet. If you see me on Facebook, if you see me on uh, Twitter, help me out. The more people that see this stuff, the faster we're going to get to happiness. Okay? The faster we're going to get to happiness, the faster uh, we're going to get to a, a point where your life becomes very easy, uh, and 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 we can uh, and the bad guys who the few bad guys that really want to remain bad guys they're going to head for the hills, and you're not going to have to hurt them. They'll just run away because they'll be terrified. All right? They're scared of me. You 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 want to make a you want to make a splash. Huh? You, 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 you share my videos. That'll scare them. Absolutely. All right. And here, here's a message to Q. How come you're not teaching people the difference between legal and lawful? How come you use those terms synonymously? How come when you make reference, you don't explain? The difference between statute and law. 
to me, it looks like you use those synonymously, and that's an error. I'm asking you, do you want to win, Q? Or do you want to lose? Because if you don't square this away, you also are going to get your butts beat. And if your intention is to restore lawful government, I'm right there with you. But if you think that I will tolerate you using a corporate fiction of law or a procedural court and use that against real criminals who have violated real law, then you are no better than those criminals. A criminal who has violated real law deserves a court of law a real court of law, and all the rights that they enjoy, not because they are citizens of the United States, but because they are men and women and enjoy plenary right. That is due process of law. That is remedy and recourse to the law. And every other thing elucidated, at least in, in the uh, Bill of Rights. And there's many more rights than the ones that were listed in the, uh, in the Bill of Rights. I'm a bit concerned because it's been two years and I don't, I have no direct acknowledgement that you even know I exist. That's troubling to me. It ought to be troubling to you. Better square it away. Or you're going to go the way of the criminals. I don't care. Then, then all you're doing is this Mickey Mouse puppet show. And you're not... Not any better than any of these other folks. You either learn the law. These people in this country are, are very ignorant of the law. They need this information. And I'm getting no help. No help from, uh, from anybody in government. No help from the military. Certainly no help from law enforcement. I mean, there's a few people here and there, the, the good people of Texas and, and the United States are helping a little bit. But we don't have sufficient visibility to actually cause people to rethink what we do here. But look, folks, this is not the world we want to live in, right? Admit it, right? I mean, uh, we got predators just literally eating our children. You know, how can anyone derive bliss from that? I mean, it's an abomination. That's not the world I want to live with. I mean, we can argue what morality is, but my gosh... That's ridiculous. And you got people are saying, "Well, I have a, I have a right to do this, and I have a right to do that," and they don't even understand what right is. They don't know where it comes from, and they certainly don't exercise a sufficient uh, amount of responsibility to even exercise a right in the first place. You know, insane people don't have rights. Why? Because they're not responsible. Now we got irresponsible people that are actually, you know, legislating. Definitely gonna be an interesting world. You know, maybe that works for robots. Don't work for men. We need real safety. Real safety comes from people who know the law and have uh, know the law sufficiently to where they can exercise rights and responsibility for the protection of everybody around them and their rights and their property. But that's not America right now. You can yell and scream that, oh, man, well, that road, he's not a U.S. citizen. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm a denizen of Texas. Born here. I belong to the land. Right? To the land. Not to the government. To the land. It's my country. If you don't like it, you can go back to your country. Your country is in Washington, D.C. Not in the several states. My land. If you don't like it, you get the hell out. Got it? Folks are going to wake up. I tell you, you want to be on board with this. Seriously on board. Totally. You folks in the military, uh, figure it out. You have a responsibility in the military. I've seen your oath. I know what it is you're supposed to be doing. And I'm just asking myself, why aren't you doing it? I'll tell you why, because you're as ignorant as anybody else about uh, 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 of the law. 
You're just doing what you think you should be doing. Well, guess what? I just turned that whole thing upside down. What are you going to do now? Well, freak out. There's a happy ending to this story. I'm not going to take effort. You don't have to put yourself at risk. Easy solutions here. I know what they are. Shoot, if I had 12 people that knew the law, shoot, we could restore the Republic of Texas in an afternoon. And not many people would have to be hurt. We might hang one guy, and that was it. Make sure he's a real bad guy. I don't think we even need to hang him, just the threat that we can. That we do have that power. I mean, you look at the federal government, I'll, I'll tell you what an error is. An error is writing a statute that makes uh, uh, advocating the overthrow of a tyrannical government illegal. You tell that to any of the founding fathers, even the kind of naughty ones, they'll laugh in your face. Right? If there's a statute that say I can't I can't advocate the overthrow of the federal government of the United States, okay? If that statute exists, that is evidence that we're talking about a government that really needs to be overthrown. Does that mean it should be overthrown? Does that mean, hey, that's what I want? No, what I want is I want people in this country to actually learn the law so that we can actually create lawful government, protect lawful government, such that we don't get these stupid statutes that have no f basis in reality whatsoever written by fat retards that know nothing. And I said retards because retards are people who are slow. And those people in Congress, they're slow. Most especially those people that are in the House of Representatives. Those are some slow folks. Right? I think half of those people have two neurons. And those neurons aren't even communicating. And they're not even acting in their own best interest. Because at some point, the referee is going to say, I'm going to give them all the information that they need. I'm going to put the power in their hands. And man, man, oh man, you better hope that these people have compassion and mercy. Otherwise, oh, they're going to just, they're just going to just, just slaughter you folks. Totally, totally unnecessary. All right. Well, hey, I'm Roge. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care.